turned out at Campbell Stadium to watch this battle between two of the nation's premier independent squads. Florida State in red over gold, Pitt in white over gold. Midway in the first quarter, no score, but quarterback Dan Marino changes all of that. Look at that catch in the end zone by Dwight Collins between two Florida State defenders, and the Panthers take a 7-0 lead. The Seminoles narrow the margin to 7-3 by the end of the first period. And watch what happens here. Rome Stark is back to punt. He's hit, which causes a penalty, but the Panther receiver fumbles the ball. And the Seminoles recover at the pit 24-yard line, declining the penalty. Florida State at the 39. Sam Platt picking up a quick 18 yards for the Seminoles. Another loss pushes the Seminoles back to the 23, giving him a third and nine, and quarterback Rick Stockstill goes to the air. He spots Hardis Johnson all alone in the end zone, and he unloads it to him, and it's a touchdown for Florida State. And they have a 10-7 lead, making Coach Bobby Bowden feel a lot better along the sidelines. It doesn't take Florida State and tailback Sam Platt very long to threaten once more. The ball at the 31. Platt, who has switched from wide receiver to running back only this year, gets all the way down to the one. Two plays, lose three, but on third down, the Seminoles hit pay dirt. Stockstill lofts the ball to Sam Childers, and he's got it. Florida State, 17, bit seven. Florida State isn't through yet. Place kicker Bill Capice added a field goal with just over a minute remaining in the half and then tries a 50-yarder as time runs out. Before the day would end, he would add two more for a record five field goals. So as the half ends, Florida State takes a commanding 23-7 lead to the locker room. But there's still plenty of time to go. The Panthers, in the third quarter, start it with a bang, driving down to the Florida State 36. Marino connects with freshman Dwight Collins once again along the sidelines. And it's a touchdown. Panther coach Jackie Sherrill decides to go for the two-point conversion. The Seminoles apply the pressure, but Marino scrambles away and spots Benji Pryor, and he's got it for two. Florida State 23, Pitt 15. Capice adds two more field goals to make it 29 to 15, but the Panthers closed within a touchdown again as freshman halfback Joe McCall manages to dive over the goal line, narrowing the margin to 29 to 22. The Seminoles are not to be denied, however, as they clinch the victory midway through the fourth quarter. Quarterback Stockstill gets receiver Kurt Unglob the ball, and he's got his touchdown from 14 yards out, and that's the way it ended as the Seminole defense picked off two passes down the stretch to thwart the Panther offense. For the second week in a row, Florida State has upset a top-ranked team. Last week, they beat Nebraska 18-14. The defeat dropped Pitt's record to 4-1, and one, snapping the Panthers' 14-game winning streak. The Seminole Indian is at midfield and has spiked his lance that is burning as the Florida State people release the balloons that float high in the air. And they're thinking major bowl and they're thinking second straight upset in as many weeks. The toss to the coin has already taken place and to the delight of the capacity crowd here, Florida State has won and will receive. The temperature at midday in the middle 80s and moments ago, as we told you, the Florida State cost of the coin was won by the Seminoles, and that will give us a chance to take a look at the referee and his staff. The referee is Paul Schmidt out of Louisville, Kentucky. The linesman, Jim Mahan out of Cincinnati. The field judge, Bill Lang of Park Ridge, Kentucky. The umpire, Donald McDonald of Baltimore, Maryland. The line judge, Thomas Adams of Florence, South Carolina. And the back judge, Dennis Phillips of Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. And now you can see Paul Schmidt saying, it belongs to you, Florida State. And coming out to kick off will be Dave Trout for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh 4-0-0. They defeated Boston College in a tough opener. 
They took Kansas 18 to three. And Jackie Sherrill told Bud Wilkinson that they had some injury problems in the early going. Then they got rolling against Temple 36 to two, beating Maryland 38 to nine. For Florida State, they're 4 1 0, losing only to Miami 10 to 9. When they elected to go for the two point conversion in the fourth quarter, it was not good. But they bounced LSU 16 to nothing in the first game, Louisville 52 to nothing in the second, trounced East Carolina 63 to 7. But everybody is talking about last week's win over Nebraska 18 to 14 after they trailed 14 to 3 at the end of the first half. And now Trout to kick it off. And this game, long awaited in the Southland, is underway. Whoops. Getting out to get them first and 10 is Larry Harris, a reserve fullback, number 30. And so now we will have, as we told you, Stock still number 11, the quarterback. Sam Platt, 29, the tailback. Mike Whiting, 27, the fullback. Your wide receivers, and they vary them. Hardest Johnson, 22. And Paul, or I should say Phil Williams, 87, and the speedster Dennis McKinnon, 6. Zeke Moad is the tight end. The ball is at the 12-yard line. First down. And Stockstill comes out throwing, and there's Hugh Green. We talked about him before the game, Jim. He really was not lined up as a defensive end before the play started. He sensed what was going to happen, moved up on his defensive end position, came in untouched. And of course, Stockstill had absolutely no chance. A loss on the play of 10 yards at a second down and 20. Greg Meisner, Jerry Boyarski, Bill Neal, and Ricky Jackson run out that front five with them. Sonseri and Fidel, the linebackers. And we've got some reserves in the defensive backfield. We'll give you those in a moment. Now let's see if Stocksdale. Stocksdale will throw from the end zone. Instead, he gives to his fullback, who's Mike Whiting, who picks up a yard or so and his third and long. Now Terry White the left cornerback is out with a knee so Pappy Thomas number nine is starting at the left corner and their strong safety starter Carlton Williamson is out with a foot injury and so Dan Short moves up to the strong safety spot for Cano a reserve quarterback and Lynn Thomas your other men of the secondary. Phil Williams goes wide left. Across the five yard line to about the seven, and we're going to get an early look at Ron Stark who will come in to kick it away. That's the typical Pittsburgh defense. They're fourth in the country in total defense. They're second in defense against the rush. They've given up only 65 yards per game against the running attack. That's an awesome defense led by Hugh Green. Ron Stark will be in the end zone, number three, out of 50 Lakes, Minnesota, while Tom Flynn, a freshman, number five, out of respect to him, is already back in his own territory. The rush is on. Not a great kick. And it takes a Pittsburgh bounce and will be knocked out of bounds. And let's see where the officials mark it. Had a 10-man rush, Jim. He didn't quite have the time he would like to have had to kick the ball. Jackie Sherrill, the coach of Pittsburgh, knows that he must put pressure on. And so we now start with excellent field position for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Dan Marino 13, Rooster Jones 2, Randy McMillan 40, the backfield. Willie Collier number 4, Dwight Collins number 32, your wide receivers. Benji Pryor 84, the tight end, and the tremendous line at Covert and May, Fader and Boris, and Grimm at center. Grimm weighs 270. It is a big crowd. There's Rooster Jones getting inside the 40 yard line, down to the 39 yard line. Before the tackle is made there by Ron Hester, number 83, who has to play linebacker this evening since Paul Purowski, the lineman of the week last year for his work over Nebraska, checked into the hospital on Thursday, appendicitis. And that's a very tough, tough loss for Florida State when you lose your leading tackler, particularly the linebacking position, where you have to cover on passes, also support the runs, be a part of the blitz. You lose a key part of the defense. Two tight ends, Mike Trombowski replaces Brewster Jones, but Pryor goes wide to the right. Moreno goes back to throw as the time throws deep toward the end zone where it is caught. Touchdown! 
And that is number 32, Dwight Collins, the freshman flanker who caught two touchdown passes last week against the University of Maryland. And Marino was right on target, a 39-yard touchdown pass. And Bobby Bowden said, you know they're going to hit the big one. He can't be covered much better than this. And get two men on him. Pass appears to be well, well covered. He goes up in the air between the two defenders. And uh, we were told, as Jim has already mentioned, that he did that last week. And it appears that he's got the jumping ability and the timing to get the ball at its highest point that makes a great receiver. Dave Trout comes in to kick the extra point. Which is good. And very quickly on the second play on offense, Pittsburgh undefeated jumps out to a 7 0 lead. Safety and engineer. Only three minutes and 49 seconds have gone by. It always bothers you from a coaching standpoint to get one that easy that early. You hope that your team won't let up. Well, I don't think this crowd, bud, will allow this team to let up since they're playing at home. Perhaps before the largest crowd ever to watch a Florida State game at home, and it's taken by the up man again. That is number 30, Larry Harris, and Harris gets out to the 21-yard line, and for the first time tonight, it's not much. But Rick Stockstill has a little bit better running room. Tackle was made by Mark Woods. Great speed that time in the kick coverage team of uh, the Pitt Panthers. It was a low line drive kick. Uh, no hang time at all, and yet they covered rapidly enough to stop the tackle on the 21. Bill Williams goes wide to the left. Artis Johnson to the right. Florida State wants to maintain poise. There is Platt, the tailback. And Platt picks up perhaps four yards out to the 25-yard line. Before you can see Fidel there, Steve Fidel, number 58 in on the tackle, along with Ricky Jackson, who is very nearly alongside of Hugh Green in numbers of sacks and tackles, although when you mention the two men, they say Jackson is great, but Green, well, Frank Boyles, Fred Akers, people have not even played against him have said he is all world. They line up uh, as a defensive end or as a stacked linebacker, and sometimes even as a strong safety. Two wide receivers to the right side now as Kurt Unglob comes in. And is split wide to the right, number 19. This is their tailback again. That is a helmet that goes high in the air, and let's change that to Mike Whiting, number 27. He lost his helmet. It's going to be third down, and about two to go. Again, Steve Fidel, number 58, the linebacker in on the play. Let's take another look at it. Stock still handing off. Whiting gets a little bit of room, turns upfield, and is really powdered. His helmet popped up in the air like the ball. But the best game made thus far by the Seminoles. Williams goes wide to the left. Right ahead goes Whiting, and I believe he is short of the first down. But we allow the officials to mark that. Greg Meisner, number 86, the big left tackle in there. And I think he needs about a half a yard, bud. Tight end uh, Mowat lined up on the wrong side that time. As he switched over, you saw Hugh Green go opposite him. He likes to be on the short side where there's always the gap where he has a better chance to use his great speed and judgment to get penetration and cause the bad play. It is not a first down. And now let us see how Pittsburgh lines up with Stark having to punt from his own end zone. They put a 10 man rush on him and he did not get away a great kick. One of the times last week against Nebraska, against the win, he kicked the ball 59 yards. Tom Flint is the deep man. Tim Lewis and Lynn Thomas, the up man. As Ron, and he spells the name R-O-H-N, Stark, stands at his own 17. 7 to nothing. The Panthers of Pittsburgh lead. Early. In the ball game, and that is Flynn at the 24-yard line. He's all forming on the far side. He has almost tripped up, and now goes down at the 27-yard line. And I can see now we're going to have some problems with our clock. It shows 18 minutes to go in the first quarter, and I think everybody listening knows there are only 15 minutes in any quarter. That's that uh, 18 digit. <laughs> they got a little <laughs> bit fouled up. Now the scoreboard not only shows 18 minutes and 13 seconds to go, but starts to plead for defense. As they have Marino and company shout back 
inside their 30 yard line. Harris coming off. He returned one kick, remember? Number 30, reserve fullback. A freshman out of Gainesville and they're working on one of his legs. Here's we have a penalty and I didn't see the flag go down. Well we'll be told in a moment by Paul Smith the referee what it is obviously against Pittsburgh and it is going to be a personal foul charged against the Panthers and it was after the ball had been whistled dead so they're facing first down and 25 and that is a tough tough penalty Ball between the 13 and 14 again two tight ends in there for the Panthers. This time, Marino is back deep in his own territory. A young man with a lot of poise, a sophomore out of Pittsburgh. Grew up in the shadow of the University of Pittsburgh. Marino hands off to his fullback, McMillan, who turns a corner and gets across the 40-yard line. And is knocked down there by Arthur Scott, who has been bothered with ankle problems, number 54, but has come back in. There he is in your picture to take over the left end starting position. The biggest loss for Florida State and things happen so fast. Paul Pirowski, as we said, a lineman of the week, 13 tackles, 12 of those unassisted, and he stripped Jeff Quinn of Nebraska the ball in the last 10 seconds. Appendicitis, and he is not in there. Second down and nearly 15 to go. And look out, Florida State jump. Let's see if they say they were pulled. The offensive formation being used by Pittsburgh uh, with one man remaining in the backfield, two wide receivers and two tight ends is designed to keep Florida State from rotating their defensive secondary. Bobby Butler is a great corner man. He is so good that they can roll him up almost on the defensive line of scrimmage and he can still cover one by one. But when you play against that balance to set, you can't rotate the secondary. Bobby Bowden. They really love him down here. Came down here from West Virginia. Well, but they had first and 25 after the run by McMillan after the penalty. It is now second down and just about 10. Nothing like a penalty to help you. One good run, too. Jeff Casper split all the way across. Marino goes back on second down and 10. Has a lot of time and underthrows his target, who was number 82, Dombrowski, the tight end. And the ball hit about five yards in front of him. And it's third down and 10 to go. He was absolutely wide open. And the Pittsburgh line did a great job of protecting Marino. Uh, they probably have the best pass protecting line in college football. We asked Jackie Sherrill about that today, and he said, well, maybe. We've been rushed twice in the last couple of years, but he said, I don't really remember any sacks. Jarvis Corsi comes out of defensive end, and Gary Henry, a fifth back, goes in on third down and 10. That is Dombrowski setting up on the far side. Quick pitch back. McMillan is going to be wrestled down by Arthur Scott. Fine play by Scott, number 54. And now with 9.03 to go in the first quarter, the Panthers leading 7 to nothing. We'll have to kick it away. In case you joined us late, a 39-yard pass from Marino to freshman Dwight Collins on the second play from scrimmage for Pittsburgh has them in the lead. David Hepler with 10 men for Florida State on the line trying to rush him. Now one drops off. Jeff Butler at the top of the screen. Rushes on. Gets the ball away. Gary Henry waits for it and has it on a fair catch at the 31 yard line. Well there have been two big plays bud. The defensive play by Hugh Green the pass from Reno to Dwight Collins other than that it's been pretty even. Need time. Time is in. Phil Williams number 87 comes wide to the right. Artis Johnson wide to the left. Up, jumping offside is number 72, Ken Lanier, the tackle about whom we talk. And that's another big mistake for Florida State. They've had several already. And I mean, jumping as they did offside against Pittsburgh on a second down and 15 situation. And now Lanier, the tackle, started the pass block even before the play developed. They're so high for this game. Playing before their very loyal home crowd. They just haven't quite settled in yet. Uh, they will very shortly. Five yard penalty takes him back to the 25 and a half yard line. 8.27 to go, first quarter. Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson. And it is 7 to nothing as Kurt Unglob comes on. They make 
a lot of jokes about Unglob and about Phil Williams. As Williams says, I'm slower than Unglob, and how slow can I be? I've got to be very slow. But both men are very sure handed wide receivers, and both men are in there now. That is Williams in motion to the left. Stock still. Still with the football. Close the football, and it's off the hands of the intended receiver. And that is Kurt Unglob down at the 41 yard line with Lynn Thomas, one half of the Thomas brothers from Pascagoula, Mississippi, defending on the play. A little bit of a rollout that time, which hopes will give Stockstill a little more time to throw the ball. If you're dropping straight back into the pocket uh, with Hugh Green rushing, uh, you got a problem having time. And now back in comes Hardis Johnson, the sophomore out of Tampa. Johnson goes wide to the left and Williams comes to the right. 8.22 to go, first quarter. And it is second down and 15 to go. Williams again in motion right. Stock still. Fake handoff. Has time. Drills the ball long. And Ted for Hardis Johnson, who at that time turned defensive back. He had to because back there with him was Rick Trocano, number eight. It's really fun to watch Hugh Green. Uh, as we take a look at the center, man in motion, you can see the guard slide over on him. Stock still with that little bit of rollout had a lot of time, but the play is extremely well covered, almost intercepted. And let me Fine. check as number eight Trocano comes over. That was Lynn Thomas. That's an interesting story. I said Pappy Thomas and Lynn Thomas. You probably heard of their brother, and that is Norris Thomas, who plays in the National Football League. Third down, 15. Bill Williams in motion. FSU has not been able to get on track offensively. Stockstill has to throw, has his time, and way out of bounds intended for Sam Childers, the tight end, number 84. And again, we're going to get a lot of looks tonight, apparently, at Ron Stark, the fine putter. Now, we still haven't had a first down by Florida State, but uh, there are a lot of teams play Pittsburgh and don't make too many first downs. Going deep is Tom Flynn. And again, Ron Stark. Second in the nation, by the way, in punting, but nearly 47 yards per punt. And that's Tom Flynn fading back inside his 30. Oh, my! Flynn puts his hand up back at the 15 yard line, and he called for a fair catch while on the dead run. He'll put it on the 13, and that's what Ron Stark is famous for, not only here, but around the country. A uh, 58 yard punt. 58 yards. And a 59-yarder into the wind. There's the score on the Marino to Collins 39-yarder. Pittsburgh. But the bigger thing is for FSU, they have not, as Bud said, picked up a first down with 3.58 to go in the first quarter. And that dangerous Dwight Collins goes wide to the right. And Benji Pryor, a tight end, sets up right behind him as they string out the defense now. Florida State one setback only and Reno almost bobbled the ball gets outstanding protection but then he always does and the ball is caught the ball is loose and belongs to look like Florida State had it for a moment they do ball was intended for Dombrowski and I believe that is Percy number 64 that gets it at the 22 he bobbled the snap from center, had marvelous protection, threw a perfect strike, but a very solid hit. The ball bounces loose. There's a wild, wild melee for it. Florida State comes up with the recovery of the fumble, and they've got great field position on the 22. Bill Capice is the outstanding field goal kicker, but FSU wants to take this in. First down from the 22, the first break of the night. Nobody in motion. That is the fullback Whiting. Whiting breaks the tackle. He's inside the 10 yard line. Down to the 7 yard line goes Mike Whiting, the junior out of Largo, Florida. And that is first and goal to go. Beautifully executed drop play, Jim, as we take a look at it again. When you've got the big, big rush on, your penetration carries you past the blockers. A fine job of carrying the football. Fine execution, and that's first down, and the first first down made by Florida State at a time that couldn't have been more welcome. Williams goes wide to the left. Unglob is in and comes to the right. And 
this is Pat big hole inside the five down to the four maybe they'll spot it at the three and that hole closed up in a hurry they are always very conscious of where Mr. Green is and on the short yardage situations I don't think they'll be coming at him not a team all year long of the four they have played has scored a touchdown rushing against the Panthers of Pittsburgh Florida State second down they spotted the ball at the four Williams is wide to the left two tight ends in there Stockdale hands and that is Whiting again and he may have picked up a half a yard and maybe here too it will be that no one scores running against Pittsburgh Steve Fidel the strong side linebacker number 58 made the stop it is third and goal to go they marked the ball still at the four as Dennis McKinnon a sophomore wide receiver number six comes in replacing Phil Williams McKinnon has a lot more speed than does Williams Pitt came with a blitz last time almost overran it Like the blitz is on, gets the ball away to Whiting, and Whiting's going to be thrown for loss. It is fourth down. Hugh Green took dead aim on Stockstill, and Meisner threw the runner, Whiting out of bounds. Beautiful defensive play. You can watch the blitz. Both linebackers going. Man for man coverage in the secondary. Good call with the screen pass, but the man for man coverage is right on top of Whiting. And then support comes with the man who is supposed to make the play, and it is no gain. Bill Capiz has kicked more field goals than anybody else in the major college ranks has kicked another one. He is now 10 for 11 as Capiz kicks the field goal. And it is 7 to 3. Pittsburgh leads Florida State. 5.45 to go. Tallahassee 27, WECA TV. 29 to go, first quarter. And Artrell Hawkins is the deep man, number 12. As Capice will kick off. Normally he kicks the ball out of the end zone. They expect perhaps the biggest crowd ever to watch a Florida State game in Tallahassee here tonight. And why not? Depending upon which poll you watch, it is Pittsburgh third in the nation or fourth in the nation. And Florida State, after their fine upset win over Nebraska with a win tonight, would certainly vault into the top ten. They didn't make very much yardage against Nebraska, but uh, the second half was somewhat indicative of the three points we just saw. Nebraska turned the ball over to them four times. They did get four field goals plus a touchdown. Coach, you always told me you look at the scoreboard, not at the statistics. That's what you do uh, all of the time, but uh, when you're on the short end, you look at the statistics. <laughs> 5.29 to go. To our right, we can see still in the dusk the state capital of Florida as we look to downtown Tallahassee. And all of northern Florida is excited over the Seminoles. 11 and 0 last year, only to lose to Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, their first major bowl ever. And had they not tried for the two points against Miami, and had there not been an interference penalty in the end zone. Maybe they would be in this ball game tonight, five and all. Oh, but those are all the ifs and and buts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The point is, they trail Pittsburgh, and the point is, Pittsburgh is the team that is here undefeated thus far. All right, time is back in. The piece ready to kick off. Hawkins does kick it long, does kick it into the end zone, and Hawkins says no. I won't bring it up. First and 10, Pittsburgh at the 20 yard line. The Steelers, under Johnny Majors, who is now at Tennessee, and under Jackie Sherrill, in the last half dozen years or more, have just been outstanding. And this Dwight Collins, number 32, is in there, comes right out of the same Beaver Falls community that Tony Dorsett came from. And he came as a running back after the second game of the season they moved him to wide receiver well now Marino is only one out of three will try to hit him he hit him on that one for 39 yards and a touchdown around the right side goes Collins at number 50 Ron Simmons who was not expected to play too much tonight makes the stop He's got great speed, Jim, if we watch him again. It appears that the corner is turned. 
But Simmons has got speed enough to run with the back, catch him from behind, and he stops Collins. That's not the name of a television show. That is incredible. He's not supposed to be able to move too fast. He's not supposed to be able to catch Collins. I guarantee you that. Brown is now coming as a wide receiver, number 18. Second down and seven. Look at the time Marino has and hits his man at the 37-yard line. And that is number four, Willie Collier, the split end. And that is a first down for Pittsburgh. And I'll repeat something that I said. We asked Jackie Sherrill, I said, Jackie, as you take a look at this, I understand, watch Marino here, that you haven't been touched in two years, your quarterback. He said, well, maybe we have, but only a sack or two, or maybe three in two years' time. And you can see the time Marino had there to get the ball to Woody Collier. Their offensive line is not only very, very well coached, they're big and strong. Seven to three. There's Jackie Sherrill. Pittsburgh leads. Still first quarter. Get going, get going. Marino has all the time in the world looking for Collins. The ball is on the throw. And he's back there to make the catch at the 37. He came back under. The coverage was behind him, and Butler makes the stop. He was a better outfielder than the Florida State defenders. Marino getting the ball. That single setback doesn't really get his arm into this one too well. No rush. Then he finally gets a little pressure as he delivers the ball. It was a high kind of crippled pigeon type. The ball was so short, he was able to come back under it. And let's take a look at Marino and see if they actually did get to him. It's something he's not used to. A lot of times when you throw the ball, you really don't know where it goes. Running play this time, down goes McMillan. A loss on the play. McMillan goes down. That's one of the things Bobby Bowden said he didn't like to do is to rush more than his normal three or four men. But that time they came with seven and it was very effective. Ron Hester filling in as a linebacker, former tight end, number 83, made the stop. The ball is at the 36-yard line. Collins goes wide to the right. And Collier comes to the left. Single setback, 3.50 to go. We're just in the first quarter of this 7-3 ball game. Marino not being touched. crowd loves it. <laughs> Once again, Jim, that perfectly balanced set is keeping Bobby Butler back off the line of scrimmage. He'd like to kind of squirm up there, rotate up where he can be a combination end to support the run, and then you do speed to cover deep. But the balanced offensive set that Pittsburgh using with two tight ends and two wide outs, one man in the backfield, keeps him out of the play. That was Ron Stark, the punter looking on, hoping he doesn't have to punt too many more times tonight. That FSU can move the football. Third down and long. Marino now being chased for one of the few times. Throws it long for the end zone. Overthrows everybody. Intended for Collins deep in the end zone. And that's one of the few times that you will find Marino fighting for his life. He handled it very well. Felt the pressure coming from the inside. Rolled to the outside. Had time to deliver the ball, but uh, running was not able to get it on target. Badly overthrown. Scott McLean comes into the defensive lineup, 336 showing, first quarter only. And we have had a ton of action already. Rooster Hawk uh, goes fourth down again. And here they go to the shotgun. Walk down, they are going to kick it. And Epler does take it away, and it does bounce on the five and does go to the end zone. Awfully close, awfully close. Pretty good maneuver there, though, lining up as though they were not going to kick, then getting Hepler back just a short distance. He tried to punt the ball, but he punted it just a little too far. And there's a flag on the play. I think it was illegal procedure. Uh, the Pittsburgh offensive team moving from their shift and then not being set for the full one second. And I think Dan Marino was a guilty man as you see the ball go into the end zone. Greg Futch saying we don't want that. We want the football at the 20 yard line. Well, I tell you, Northern Florida and Tallahassee have the real football fever, and they're seeing a real football game tonight. Seven to three. The only three points of Florida State set up on the fumble recovery by the Seminoles inside the 25 yard line. Is a tailback, the fake to him, then the throw by and there's Bill Williams. First 
own 32-yard line. Williams makes the catch. As I said, he is not fast, but anything thrown near him, he gets. Great throw that time by Stockstill, too. He was well covered. He just made the little turn, and the ball was right there. Let's take a look at it again. A little bit of a running fake to Platt. Stockstill sets up, and you can see the little curl right between the two defensive men. First down. And Short filling in for the injured Williamson was a defender who made the tackle and now down at the 30 yard line for a loss of two goes number 29 Sam Platt. We said before the games in that neither of these teams had run the ball particularly well and that certainly seems to be the pattern thus far. Both of them throw it extremely well but their running attack leaves little to be desired. Well we can talk about the defense of Hugh Green. We can talk about the kicking of Ron Stark. I'd like to talk about the production that Dan Marino gets with their own offense. It is incredible. He stands back there all day long. All right, third down. Check that. Second down. Whistle blows. Flags go down as Stockstill is ushered out of bounds by Hugh Green. I think we had some movement in the offensive line. Caused the defensive reaction, but uh, sometimes it doesn't get called that way. Let's take a look at it. I don't know that I saw any movement that time. I the Pittsburgh man said he thought the center moved his shoulder. And the officials are now trying to decide. Is it second down and 17? Is it second down and seven? Or does it stay at second down and 12? They're giving the options to Hugh Green. And now they're saying a legal procedure. Bowden doesn't like it. If they don't like it, I don't think Bobby Bowden does either. Not that he feels it's a bad call, but because it is yet another mistake by this hyped up Seminole team. That's first third time in the first quarter that they have had illegal procedure on offense. Ball at the 25 yard line so it'll be second down and 17 from there. And now Kurt Unglob comes in as a wide receiver and Hardis Johnson goes out. Williams goes to the top of the screen. Unglob comes to the side. Still, Green trying to get to him. Good job on Green. Gets the ball over. There is his tight end, Childers. And Childers is out near the 30 yard line. The market at the 26 yard line. And Green really gave that one a great rush. He forced it. He took the inside pattern. Stockstill felt him take the inside pattern and had the very good judgment and good reflex to roll it outside of Green and hit the pass, although it was kind of a do or die situation. Only picked up two yards on the play. Platt is back into the ball game on third down at about 15 to go from the 27 yard line. Stockstill has time. Now he runs out and lost the football. Belongs to Pittsburgh, I believe. Now they're saying no, he was throwing the football or that he had been stopped before he fumbled. Let's take a look at it again watching the linebacker. Wish we had a picture of. Stock still. We can see the rush coming. Green has dropped off as a middle linebacker. Here comes the pressure on him. And I don't see any arm forward there at all, Jim. I'm sorry that I don't, but uh, <laughs> I didn't see that arm start forward. Well, Ron Stark gets another chance. They kick the ball away, and Tom Flynn is a deep man. Rush is not on. He's got Inside the 20, inside the 15, still running. He's inside the 10 at the 9. Harris is after him, and he's bumped out of bounds. Harris is looking around saying, I was clipped. But they're not calling that. They're instead saying the ball comes inbounds inside the 20-yard line. They'll mark it at the 15 and a half. And that was a 72-yard punt. Is that all? <laughs> that is all, 72 yards. Brian. 32 <laughs> seconds to go. That is what kept, as Bud told you, Florida State in the game against Nebraska. They couldn't do anything, but they'd set Nebraska back on their heels. Our score is seven to three. Collins and Collier come wide to the left, bringing Butler and Jarvis Corsi over with them. Ball is handed off, and that is Rooster Jones, and he may have gotten a yard, and that is about all. It looked like James Gilbert, number 51, the middle guard was in there along with Reggie Herring 39 and Ron Hester 83. 
Now Ron Simmons he is not in there. It is his backup, Junior James Gilbert, 51 at the time. Okay, hey, Jim, when you force your opponents to punt from their own 21 yard line, you do not expect to start from your own 15. Second down and nine to go as the first quarter is over. That's it. And it has been an outstanding and exciting first quarter. Pittsburgh scored on a 39 yard touchdown pass, and Florida State has kicked the field goal. At the end of one, it is Pittsburgh seven and Florida State three. We start the second quarter, second down nine, and there's a running play. Rooster Jones breaks it across the 30-yard line, and down he goes with a saving tackle, but he got him out of a big hole. Bobby Butler, number 21, came up, and that is the longest run of the night by uh, Pittsburgh Panther Rooster Jones. Carries it out to the 31-yard line, and it is first down the Panthers. That's the kind of thing that you need to do to get the offense balanced up. Uh, statistically, Florida State has had a very balanced offense. In their first four games, they are only two yards difference total rushing from passing. Dad Marino with one setback. He's got the time. He throws the ball deep, and this may be caught by Collins. It is. Bonus short who is from Pittsburgh fell down and Collins fell down and caught the ball as he fell at the 25 yard line and here come the Panthers and Bobby Bob is wondering how can it happen. Well it's not supposed to happen when you got the man covered. Quarterback dropping straight back Collins just runs a little post pattern it looks like Montessori's got him but he doesn't have the speed at the last moment as he turns in Collins and makes a great great catch of the football falling as he makes the reception. We asked Jackie Sherrill how fast is White Collins his answer about as fast as he wants to be or has to be. <laughs> First man through down to the 20 yard line it goes McMillan Randy McMillan in a market at the 22 yard line let's say a gain of three second down and seven early here in the second quarter I'm Jim Simpson with Bud Wilkinson and we have a game involving undefeated Pittsburgh and once beaten Florida State by a single point by Miami by Miami and the team that upset Nebraska a week ago Rooster Jones comes back in. and now checks quickly out as they bring in Dombrowski a second tight end. Scott has been out with the ankle injury who has been an outstanding player tonight. Second fumble. One of them cost Pittsburgh three points. This may have cost them three or seven of their own. Oh well, now Rick Stockstill will try to get it going. Sending Williams wide to the right. It's a quick handoff. Ball is put in but bounced off. Never came close to making the proper exchange. Doc still hands off and whoops going absolutely nowhere is Mike Whiting getting up in front of him is Ken Lanier 72 trying to handle the blocking and there's Sunseri the linebacker for Pittsburgh who was behind the whole thing along with Boyarski and so that is a gain of well to be generous a yard second down and nine from the 23 yard line. I think the reason Bobby Bowden was shaking his head is both the touchdown pass and the last long pass to Collins really were quite well covered. It was just a remarkable catch in both cases. Dennis McKinnon is in and now is in motion to the right. He is a speedster, but it goes back to the tailback Platt, who used to be a wide receiver himself, but gets out to the 28 yard line. It'll be third down and four to go. Lynn Thomas, number three, right him out of bounds, and then pats him on the head. Platt was a wide receiver, been a running back in. High school and wanted to be a running back here. Said he didn't like to be a wide receiver and then got his chance and is now a running back. Williams comes back in and Unglov comes back in, numbers 87 and 19. And on third down and a short four at the 29 yard line. Florida State, remember, trailed Nebraska 14 to 3 at the half last week before winning. Their stock still. Flag is down as he overthrows his man and is almost intercepted by Tricano. Great rush by Pittsburgh. Flag is down, remember, at the 28 yard line. I don't believe, Jim, that the offensive line for Florida State ever got set. 
And that's going to be their fourth illegal procedure or motion penalty in the first 18 minutes of the ball game. The way Pitt's rushing them, uh, they're trying to get a bead on who's coming from where. And that time when they were trying to get that set up, they didn't take their three-point stance quickly enough. Tom Flynn goes back, and now hold your breath, folks, because here comes Ron Stark again. Last time, he's only over 70 yards. This man can keep a team in a ball game or force another team out of the ball game, and it is almost the ball away. Stark is knocked down and is going to go over, I believe, to Florida State. Now they may take it because of the fumble at the other end and they can take the play instead of the penalty. Instead of taking roughing the kicker, they can take the recovery of the fumble at the 24. Big rush. It's right up the middle this time. You always try to have the rushing men go by the kicker over the spot from where the ball will be kicked, but when you're coming right up the slot, you don't quite have that angle. If you touch the kicker and do not touch the ball, it's a penalty, but the fumble downfield, of course, will be taken by Florida State. And once again, a fumble by Pittsburgh. The third fumble, the third, third turnover has given Florida State excellent field position. Ron Hester taking off his disguise as a man on specialty teams, number 59. Going back to 83, the linebacker in action because Pirowski is out, recovered the fumble. Outstanding field position for Florida State. It is 7-3 Pittsburgh. 12 minutes to go. This. And ESPN will be there. Stockstill is back to throw. Has the time in the end zone over everybody except perhaps Pittsburgh, and he is out of bounds. The man who went back trying to intercept the ball was Trocano, and a flag is down. Back upfield. Flags are flying, and so are footballs. And they're calling the penalty mm -hmm. against Florida State. Illegal hands, I believe, but I'm not quite sure. I didn't quite catch the signal. Well, we will soon get it. You know, most official signals are standard, and some do a little variation whether they realize it or not. This is Paul Schmidt. And I think what he's saying is it's a crack back block. That's correct. Crack back block on the play takes the ball to the 39 yard line. They've got to get inside the 15 to get a first down. That's yet another mistake. Florida State is piling them up, but they're still in a ball game, and we've got a long way to go. Stock still. Hands off, and there goes his tailback. Right all the way down to the 21 yard line. It'll be second down and about seven to go. They had the rush on, and as we've talked a couple of times, anytime you're pouring in there, if the ball carrier breaks past the seven man rush, as he does here, there's very little support downfield. Big, big opening. The safety man has to come up, make the tackle, a very nice cut. Finally, Sam Platt comes across, Pam Platt, the ball carrier, rather, and the tackle is made after a great game. Second down, seven to go. Stockstill hands the ball to Platt, and wow, you know what I was about to say? As the tackle is made there by Meisner, the name that I've not called recently has been that of Hugh Green. After that one outstanding play, he has been pressuring the passer. He's very much in the ball game, but they are really teaming up to stop Hugh Green. And he's bouncing around enough that uh, it's very hard to locate him. He's on end sometimes. He's a stacked linebacker sometimes, and then he's kind of a rover at other times. Just look for the number 99. Otis Johnson goes to the right. It is third down and nine. The ball inside the 25-yard line. Back still back, goes the ball, and he's got his ball. Oh, he's got his ball. 23-yard touchdown pass to Hardis Johnson. Let's take a look at it again. A little bit of a running fake here. Throws the defense momentarily. A very, very hard rush. Stockstill makes a great throw. Johnson is open, and it is a touchdown. And now, Florida State finds itself in the lead. Both scores helped along by fumble recoveries. Capice in to add the extra point and does so. And it is 10 to 7. Pittsburgh dominated the early going of the first quarter. Florida State hung in there only 
on one fumble recovery has righted the ship a little bit and that was a picture play from Rick Stockstill to Hardis Johnson. And there's the score Florida State 10 and Pittsburgh 7. And the Seminole mascot their horse renegade absolutely thrilled as Bill Capice will kick it off. We have figured it out when it says 18 minutes and 33 seconds to go what it means on the scoreboard clock is eight minutes and 33 seconds to go. Hard to lose the one. <laughs> Bill Capice. And in the end zone will be Artrell Hawkins. Last time he had no shot at all at returning the ball because it was too deep. This one he may at the goal line decide to bring it out. He drops the football. The Florida State team is down there and down goes Hawkins at the seven yard line. Now Pittsburgh is showing a few cracks at the scene for the first time tonight. They're playing in a very difficult field position on the first series of downs. Green made a great play and threw Stocksdale at the two yard line after a very short kickoff return by Florida State. When they punted the Panthers got the ball on the 44 yard line as we watch the ball being bobbled here in the end zone. Everybody now gathers around the ball. Can't quite tell who's going to pick it up. They have a little meeting decide somebody's going to get it and by now the Florida State defense has penetrated downfield and they would get the kickoff return to only the six yard line. Maybe they had a little meeting and decided somebody had better get it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now Marino might have taken too much time and he may be complaining that it is the crowd. But now he is having a discussion with Mark May his right tackle. And now the Panthers begin to make the mistakes letting Hardis Johnson loose then dropping the kickoff and now a penalty called when they had a first down on their own six yard line. And Dan Marino the sophomore will try to regroup them. They move the ball back half the distance. And say there was motion in the line. And once again, Marino says we cannot hear the snap count. This time the referee agrees with him. We cannot hear the snap count, so it's an official's timeout. All right, from the end zone, first down. Marino will try it again. Throws the ball out here intended for Woody Collier at the seven yard line. And that'll get them a second down and eight situation. Funny thing, in talking to Jackie Sherrill this morning, he said, Listen, let me tell you about the Florida State crowd. It is an outstanding, enthusiastic crowd, but it is not a mean crowd. He said, I love to play down there, and you'll enjoy them tonight. I don't think his team enjoys it so much down at that end of the field at the moment. Well, when your team goes ahead, uh the crowd's going to be enthusiastic and it's hard to be quiet. All right, Marino with the football. Marino gets it away. Marino for Collins and it is no good. Double team back there by Keith Jones and Bobby Butler. And Dwight Collins can't hold on to that one. And it is third down and long yardage to go. 9.49 left. And there's Jackie Sherrill. Let me make. A correction on the scoreboard clock, but I said I got to figure it figured out. Now I got to figure it figured out. When it says yes. 18, it really means 10, 10. not 8. Right. Okay. <laughs> because there are 9 minutes and 49 seconds left in the first half, where the score is 10 to 7, Florida State. One set back now. And now the Florida State team is saying, hey, come on, folks. Let them play. Marino pumps once. In trouble, gets the ball out on a delay, and down goes the man who caught the ball short of the first down. And that is number 84, Benji Pryor. As James Harris, number 33, the cornerback, was there to get him out of his fourth down. And now Dave Hepler will have to come in and kick it away, and he's been watching Ron Stark of Florida State have an outstanding night. The Seminoles play with great enthusiasm and they've really caught fire after making the go ahead touchdown. Gary Henry, a very exciting punt returners at the 45 yard line for Florida State. 
Pittsburgh unbeaten. Ranked in the top five, having a shorts medal tonight. The rush is on. And Henry's going to watch the ball hit and take a Florida State bounce back near the 45 yard line. But it's first down for the Seminoles of Florida State. 8.51 to go. And listen to this crowd. The team has held on. The fans here have gone big time lately and they're happy about it. 11 0 last year in the Orange Bowl. And last week upsetting Nebraska. This week at the moment at least leading Pittsburgh by the score of 10 to 7. But there's a long way to go. And Florida State is trying to prove. Now this school was just chartered in 1947. So there's not a long tradition to this school in playing football. As there is for the example a great tradition of Pittsburgh. Chuck Sutherland if you come back to the glory days of Pittsburgh. The, the national championship won by Johnny Major's team. And, Jack Asheros team bidding for it this year. Florida State is playing this game just like they did last week. Uh, turnovers giving them the lead at this point in time as turnovers gave them a victory against Nebraska. Bill Williams wide to the right, Unglove to the left. Williams the man in motion. Knoxdale on the pitch back to Platt. Ricky Jackson, number 87. It's the basic play out of the I formation. Man in motion to keep the secondary support down a little bit. The toss back to Platt. He turns it up inside, finds a little opening, accelerates, lowers the boom, gets five yards on the play, two of it with extra effort. Second down and five. All on the 41. Second man through his Platt. That's got the first down. Time it is number 29, Dan Short taking over for Carlton Williamson at strong safety, making the tackle. And remember, for the Panthers, Terry White, their starting left cornerback, is not playing knee injury, and Carlton Williamson, their starting strong safety, is not playing foot injury. Both are expected to be back next week when it's homecoming at Pittsburgh and West Virginia comes to town. Again, Phil Williams is the man in motion. Again, this pitch back is to Platt. Platt looking for running room as a flag goes down. He only gets a yard or two, but a flag is down at the 31-yard line. Hugh Green right in the middle of the whole situation talking with the official. Florida Strait has drawn more than its share of penalties. That's better than more, more than your share of fumbles. Aha, uh -huh, which the Panthers have done. Each team has had a touchdown pass. The difference is Bill Caprices. The pieces field goal. Now well, we're going to have a little discussion here. He wants to be sure that he's got the right information before he makes his decision. Holding. Charged against the Seminole. And now, personal foul. Charged against Pittsburgh. So it is still first down. sideline Williams comes over to the sideline and McKinnon is going to replace Williams and Stockstill is saying okay here's the play of Dunnett McKinnon Dennis McKinnon ball is inside the 33 yard line and are they glad to see that man John Madden back but out with an ankle senior starting center Quick pitch back, that is Platt. Platt gets a good block. Gets down near the 30-yard line, a gain of three yards. It'll be second down and seven across the way. And there is Fidel again, Steve Fidel, number 58, the senior linebacker who made the stop. And Ricky Jackson also floated over there, number 87. Looked to me like he had an opening, but the pursuit was so fast that as he turned upfield, it closed before he could get through it. Artis Johnson goes wide to the right. Williams comes to the left. Florida State leading by three. And there goes Platt. There he goes. Florida State. Lynn Thomas made the saving tackle. But then it 
great, great job, Jim, of reading the blitz by Pittsburgh. And you come all out to rush the passer. You don't have the ability to slide with the play to get the proper angle of pursuit against the run. They keep overrunning it. Let's take a look at it here. It's just a handoff. Everybody's trying to pressure going inside, and there's nobody left upfield to move laterally to get over in front of Platt. Looked as though he might take it all the way. We get a very rapid close, and he stopped on the one-yard line. Nobody has carried the ball in against Pittsburgh all year long, rushing with the football, and down goes Starksville, hit first by number 66, Sunseri, and I believe the ball belongs to him. Stockstill, I tell you, Son is like a running back for him. He was in the backfield as quickly as Stockstill faded back. Stockstill did a great job to keep the football. Takes the ball from the one back to the five, and a second down a goal to go. Let's take a look at it. You can see the gap being shot right here. He doesn't have time to hand the ball off. He's very, very fortunate to not fumble the football. So he did drop it, but gets back on it. All right, quick pitch back here comes Scott, and he is tipped up and gets inside the five. And it'll be third and short. And that time, Hugh Green and Ricky Jackson were very much a part of the play. Jackson talking to Platt. Boys from Jacksonville. The play brought in. This is third down. Stock still throws it out of the end zone. State moves up to a lead that is unprecedented, doubling the total point of any team who scored against Pittsburgh all year long. When you start out first down on the one yard line and wind up throwing and third down from your five, you know how well they play rush defense. Toxdale pumps, throws. Kelly is open in the end zone, backing up, and he makes the reception, almost intercepted, but the timing wasn't there defensively. It was there offensively. Bill Capice is now 19 for 19 and kicking extra points. And the Pittsburgh team, remember, broke on top 7 to nothing, and Florida State looked as though it was going to be a long, long night. They could not get a first down. Then Pittsburgh began to drop the football, and Florida State began to pounce on it. And most notably recently, there have been the runs of Sam Platt. And on each occasion, and who knows what the defenses are and whether they've rotated one side or the other, but on each occasion, the touchdown pass has come in the far right-hand corner of the end zone. Now, whether or not the, the setup, the safeties, the cornerbacks, the linebackers had the same assignment each time, I don't know, but it's just a coincidence. They're both over in the right corner. I believe they were playing what we call cover five, uh, Jim, where you have two people playing deep and everybody else covering man for man. That's short, close to the goal line. You don't really have enough room, enough time to go for the ball. It's not in the air that long. Bill Capice has accounted for five of the 17 points tonight. His last kick was returned by Hawkins, who is standing on the one foot line. Florida State has charged up. He's put the foot into it. Hawkins in the end zone will come out to the 20. First down 10. Best field position Pittsburgh has had the ball was on their first possession, which was, as we look at the scoring play, drive, seven plays, lapse time, 322. But the only time that Pittsburgh has had the ball on their side of midfield on an exchange was the first time when we had a rather short punt and they got it in the 44. Other than that, they've been on the 20 or behind it with one other exception. And now Dan Marino brings him out. He's not at good field position for some little time now. And here comes Hawkins and he's going to be dragged down. Hawkins on a fine play by Gary Futch, number 79. One half of the Futch brothers from Ocala, Florida, 6'2", 245. A loss on the play of a yard back to the 19th, second down and 11. 
Florida and State is content not to try to rush the passer that hard. They're playing normal defense where they hit control and then pursue. Pittsburgh has been trying to get to the passer blitzing. They're getting so much penetration that on a few running plays they haven't been able to get back into the pursuit. Jarvis Gorsey comes out. Gary Henry, the fifth back, comes in for Florida State on second and long. Running play. Hawkins with the football. Long Hester, number 83, hit him first, and then everybody covered up. And they said that Hester was not a hitter, a former tight end. Well, he made a hit on Hawkins then. Well, I don't think you play major college football if you're not a hitter. I don't think he's hits quite like Herring does, but as you can see here, as we get a little reverse play, Hawkins has the ball, and that's pretty solid contact. Caught his third down and eight to go from the 22-yard line. 419 left to go in the half, 17 to 7, Florida State. Jim, that's the best throw he's made. Somehow Collins just didn't keep his eye on it. It went right between his hands when he should have made the reception. Let's take another look. Beautiful pass protection blocking by the Pittsburgh line. Reno sets, throws. That was a little bit high, a little bit high. Almost intercepted. And now Hepler will come in to kick the ball away to Gary Henry. Nine men on the line of scrimmage for Florida State. 4.06 to go, first half. Butler trying to block at Kennard. Henry watches the ball come down to him at the 43. He's a good punt returner, but has no shot there. Excellent special teams play by Pittsburgh. And Florida State has excellent field position again at the 46. And time of possession was much in the favor of Pittsburgh in the first quarter, but I think at the end of this quarter, you're going to find it's changed a little bit. 32-yard punt, which contrasts tremendously with what happens when we have Stark kicking for Florida State. Bill Williams goes wide to the right in the 17-7 ball game. Less than four minutes to go in the half. Capacity crowd, halftime ceremonies coming up, and I'm sure that they will be royally received here because at the moment the Seminoles and their fans are having a wonderful evening. Whether or not it continues, we'll just have to wait and see. Williams in motion. Into the line goes their fullback. Check that. That is the fullback, but for the first time tonight, it is Ken Burnett, number 20, who has come in, and Whiting is out. Little fake pitch to the tailback and then hand it off to the short man. Pittsburgh read it perfectly. Second down and nearly 10 to go. McKinnon and Hardis Johnson both come wide left. But that is Platt going the other way, and there's a fine play across the way by Ricky Jackson. You see Hugh Green and Fidel in your picture, but it was Ricky Jackson, 87, who made that play. And it is third down and seven. I'm sure that Jackie Sherrill is beginning to wonder, do we keep pressuring him? We've been burned so badly when we've penetrated too much as we watch a replay here, and we see Jackson coming across to make the tackle. And Green was held out of the play most of the time, but it is third down and 10. Florida State guilty of many mistakes, but they've got the big lead. There goes Pratt. Pratt has got the first down. Green peeled back to make the stop, but Platt has the first down. And this senior from Jacksonville is having an outstanding evening against the team that is second in the nation in rushing defense. They're doing a marvelous job of sensing when the rush is going to be on. Let's take a look at it again. You can see the hard, hard rush here by Pittsburgh as they try to go through the gaps. As they go through the gaps, they get behind the ball carrier. They don't have the lateral pursuit. Platt picked up the first down. Ricky Williams comes in, number 44, to replace Platt for the moment. He is the tailback. He is the man with the football, and he's not going anywhere, is he? That front four did a fine job there, and there's Ricky Jackson again getting up. Jerry Claiborne of Maryland said after last week's game, they talk about Hugh Green. I agree with it. But add in Ricky Jackson, and you've got the 
finest pair of defensive ends I've seen in, well, perhaps my life playing collegiate ball. Otis Johnson comes in as they bring in wide receivers with the plays to junior Rick Stockstill, who watched Jimmy Jordan and Wally Woodham play so well here for so long. Second down, nine to go from the 42 yard line of Pittsburgh. Stockstill still with the football. He's got time. He's got a man open. That is Moat. And Moat is inside the 25 yard line to mark it at the 25 and a half. That's the first down. Happy Thomas runs him out of bounds. Very tough pattern to cover. Fake one way, have your tight end cross the field on the other side as we watch it here. <clears throat> Fake going left, late draw. Stock still turns, throws back to Mout, who's crossing the field, going against the grain, and he was wide, wide open. Picks up the first down and puts Florida State in field goal range. Or Bill Capice, it certainly is, with 1.28 left in the half. Florida State already up by 10. Stock still. Still has the football. Goes deep. He's got a man on his way. He had beaten Lynn Thomas. Going down and then cutting toward the corner of the end zone. But Stock still overthrew his man. That's the defense we were talking about where you drop two safety men back to simply play the ball. They get on the hash marks as we take a look at it again. The running fake throws the front men who are supposed to be covering man for man. That enabled the receiver to beat them and you can see that Stockstill <laughs> is a little upset because boy he was wide open wide open. All right second down 10 121 showing on the clock. Pitch back that is Ricky Williams and fine play there and guess who Hugh Green that's who he must have heard me say that he had been mentioned too much lately last couple of plays Hugh Green has been very much there and it is a loss on the play on third down and 11. It's hard to make the tackle when they run away from you. Now Capice has great range remember but they would surely like to pick up if not the first down another five or six to get him a little bit closer with less than a minute to go. Bill Williams wide to the right. I'm going to be curious about how Pittsburgh plays it. Did they give it the big rush or play it normal? Well here they come and the ball is knocked down. Trying to get the ball out to Platt in the flat. And now they're going to send out Capice, and this will be a boomer, but Bud and I on the sidelines earlier watched him boom some balls to the uprights from 51 and 52 yards out. As a matter of fact, I beg your pardon, Bud, the only one that he has missed has been from 52 yards out, and he is 10 for 11 this year, including one tonight, and this will be 43 yards. From 43 yards out, and another one. Seven seconds to go. Maryland scored nine points. Boston counted six. That's 15. Kansas and Temple, five between them. That's 20 points. And already Florida State has as many in this first half as has been scored against the Pittsburgh defense all year long in four games. 37 seconds left. Capice will try to put another one out of the end zone. His leg may be getting tired. Hawkins deep in the end zone and he's not going to bring it up. I tell you when you can get punts of distance and no return and kickoffs into the end zone with no return that is a big plus to any team and that's what both Jackie Sherrill and Bobby Bowden were talking about with Bud before the game began the kicking game and what that means on field position as I said Pittsburgh got the ball the first time on the Florida State 44 since then the best field position they've had has been their own 20 yard line on an exchange. 80 yards is a long way to go, particularly with only 37 seconds left. And five defensive backs in there now for Florida State. Begging Marino will crank it up. And now he's thrown to Collins, and Collins is going to throw, and the ball is caught. Caught by number 82, Dabrowski, at the 34-yard line with 29 seconds to go. So Jackie Sherrill goes to his bag of tricks, having Collins, a former running back out of Beaver Falls, taking the pitch out to Marino, and then throwing to Dombrowski. And then while he's signaling from the sidelines, timeout, timeout. <laughs> oh, there's timeout for the ball at the 34 yard line, and the crowd quite pleased with what's going on. And here's, uh, well, here's the trickiness of Pittsburgh that picked up some yardage, but not nearly enough. Very hard. The defense isn't going to force you very much. The halfback throwing the ball 
And the receiver is open, but uh, as you can see, the Florida State people coming from the right of the screen, they're just going to stop the long bomb. They're not going to worry about anything else. Here's that same play again, and as we saw Marino move there, and we see Dombrowski go down with the pursuit of Florida State. Reminded that Marino did not practice on Wednesday this week, nor did he for three days last week, and played very well last week against uh, Maryland and beating him 38 to 9. Strained some ligaments in his knee, but has shown good mobility. But the biggest thing is that we point out that they just don't get to Marino, have not for years, nor his predecessor there, Rick Trucano. The thing is about Marino tonight, he was pressured out of the pocket on one occasion. And that's about as close as they came. They didn't lay a hand on him, but they pressured him out of the pocket. From a 34 yard line, first down 10, 29 seconds to go in the half. It's 20 to 7 for the state. And the Panthers send two wide receivers out to the left. And Marino, lots of time again, fires the football, and that was on one hop to his intended receiver, who is the same man, Mike Dombrowski, at the 42 yard line. And that took six seconds, 23 seconds left. They've got to hit something in front of the three deep safety men as they rotate and then get a good run to get it down where they've got a chance for a field goal. Pittsburgh is number three in scoring defense in the nation, allowing five points per ball game. They've allowed four times that amount thus far tonight. They will not any longer hold that position, I don't believe, after tonight. White Collins comes wide to the right. Other wide receivers, or at least they're lined up that way, go wide left. Again, excellent protection for Marino, and the ball is dropped by Dombowski. Had the ball at the 43-yard line and dropped it. Marino did a fine job of throwing it. He put it over the linebackers in front of the safety men, but Dombrowski just did not concentrate enough to make the catch. As we see Marino go back, there's only a three-man rush, and he's got all day to throw the ball. Over the linebacker, slightly behind, but Dabrowski could have made the catch, did not do so. All right, Julius Dawkins is in and wide to the left. He's a wide receiver, number 80. First time we've seen him tonight. Marino is going for Dawkins down the sideline, maybe intercepted. It is by Keith Jones, who's back at the 40, the 50, the 40, and Jones goes down with three seconds left in the half. Inside the 35 yard line. Yet another turnover, and Florida State had two men back there on Julius Dawkins, and the ball was overthrown. And Jones, the academic All American, picked it off. Number 28, and he's going to keep that football. The problem here is do you go for the field goal right now or do you that's exactly what they're going to do three seconds they got to go for the field goal right now it'll be 51 yards bud we saw him hit him from this hash mark with nobody rushing him in warm-ups let's call it 50 yards only only for Bill Capice who is hit on two tonight and to repeat ourselves, he is now 11 of 12, more than anybody else in the major college ranks of kick this season. And he was not the field goal kicker here before this season. He was the kickoff man. And Pittsburgh really did not get over very well to cover for the interception. The linemen were over on one side of the field when the interception was made. They did not react too well. From 50 yards out, a lot of foot. It is good. That's the end of the half. The third field goal for Capice, who's kicked two extra points, and now has 11 of the 23 as he runs to the dressing room. And number three or four ranked Pittsburgh, depending on which poll you're reading, and they are 4-0, really have their job cut out for them in the second half. At the half, Florida State 23 and Pittsburgh 7. The Florida State Band is on the field. The Florida State fans are ecstatic. The Pittsburgh fans will be forgiven if they are a little shell-shocked. But Bud Wilkinson would like to say that, hey, they haven't hurt Pittsburgh that much, but I said the bottom line, Bud, is the score is 23 to 7. I know that is, but uh, I really don't feel that uh, Pittsburgh has played a bad first half defensively at all. Their offense has turned the ball over three times on fumbles, one interception. 
Florida State made one drive of 44 yards for a touchdown. Other than that, they've been set up where all you had to do is move it just a little bit to put points on the board. The thing that is so dramatic to me, we talked before the game about Starks punting. He's punted five times for a 54-yard average per kick. Pittsburgh's averaging 31 yards per kick, and that's really field position, and the field position is why the Seminoles are ahead. All right, let us be hypothetical here, as they say. You've got the Pittsburgh team, and I don't mean that I want you to second-guess Jackie Sherrill or Bobby Bowden, but you made all these mistakes, and you're in there, and you're down by this score to a Florida State team playing at home. What do you tell them? Well, you tell them that we've got to make the running attack go a little bit, but we've got to start catching the football. We've done a good job of protecting our passer, but we have dropped too many balls downfield. We don't need to try to make it all up in the first time we get possession. We can stay with our game plan, score three more times, we win the game, and just play solid defense, and don't ever give them good field position. I don't know if that's simple or not, but we'll come back to Tallahassee, Florida, in just a moment. We're Florida State now on the Florida State University Band. And right now, they're playing a brand new day from the Broadway production of The Wiz. of the ball was in the second quarter bud because at the end of the first quarter it was Pittsburgh way out in front and they scored on the second play of the game and have not uh, the second play of the game from offense and they have not scored since and again you've got to point out the marvelous punting of Stark he's averaging 53 yards per punt against 31 yards per punt when you're making that much on each exchange that gives you that field position. Florida State has gained 53 fewer yards than has Pittsburgh, but the scoreboard reads at halftime, Florida State 23, at number three or four ranked, Pittsburgh, depending on those polls, only seven. The second half kickoff when we come back to Tallahassee. Tallahassee 27, W. Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson, we're back in Tallahassee, Florida with the scores. We are about to begin the second half. It's 23 to 7. There's Rick Stockstill of Florida State, who's had an outstanding first half. And of course, his scores have been set up by fumbles. Here is Dan Marino in that starting backfield. He's been getting excellent protection, and Pittsburgh will receive the ball. Uh, Rooster Collins, or rather, Rooster Jones played only a little bit but did have one good run. Mark May leads the offensive line as Bill Capice has kicked off into the end zone again, and that comes under the situation of so what's new. And that's uh, so really devastating to an offensive football team when you start on your own 20-yard line or behind it every time you get the ball first and 10. It's a long way to go against a well-drilled defense like Florida State, and I know that Bobby Bowden has told his men, don't ever give them anything cheap, and also we've got to score some more points. Don't take it for granted. we got enough to win. White Collins goes wide to the right. Woody Collier comes to the left. Marino hands to McMillan his fullback, and McMillan is broken across the 30-yard line and has a first down. Bumped out of bounds by James Harris, number 33, along with Keith Jones, number 28, and now there's a flag down out of bounds. And Maybe Florida State was a little bit too eager to put the hit on McMillan. McMillan was out of bounds. Uh, they kept trying to tackle him, and I think we're going to get an unnecessary roughness penalty or a personal foul. Now that's just the kind of thing that give the Panthers excellent field position, as Bobby Bowden knows. That's what you don't want to have happen. And you can read his lips there saying he gave them an elbow. But that'll move the ball out near midfield and be a first down near midfield. Well, that is a pickup of 29 yards on that one play. They started with the draw play. Their passing has been the only thing that's looked consistently good. 
Florida State was thinking pass. They overrushed, opened it up for the draw. And Marino, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh, has Collins right and Collier left again. A fake, a little flip out to McMillan, his fullback, and McMillan takes a hit after he gains two or three yards across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Well, it may be that at the end of the season they will crown a national champion who has lost a football game. But the odds are against it. Ohio State has already lost. Oklahoma's now lost twice. Nebraska's lost to Florida State. Florida State's lost. Pittsburgh has not lost, but finds itself down 23 to 7. If there's a chance for a national championship, as two preseason, preseason polls said there was, they had better get on the stick. There's Collins in the secondary, first down inside the 40. Simply stood up and flipped the ball to Collins, and they're laying off Collins five to ten yards, and it was an easy job for White Collins to pick up the first down. I think that was an automatic. There were no linebackers out there. Simply two safety men ready to take him inside and outside. They just hit him quick, and with no linebacker there, it was an easy catch and a big gain. John Brown replaces Collins for the moment. Goes wide to the right. First down at the 36 of Florida State. Marino hands to Rooster Jones. A fine tackle by Reggie Herring, number 39, the linebacker on that side. Each team playing without some defensive stalwarts tonight. On second down and long, automatically Florida State takes out Jarvis Corsi and goes to the fifth back, Gary Henry, number 40. Number 82, Dombrowski goes wide right. Collier's the man that's flanked wide left. Second and long. Marino back to throw. Marino puts it up. It is for Collins. Touchdown. 36 yards. I don't know how he beat him that bad. Everybody knew they were going to throw it. He has got that speed, as you said in the first half, but Jackie Sherrill is true. And you asked him, Jim, how fast can he run? And he said, as fast as he has to. Let's take a look at it again. Marino dropping back. I thought he was going to get a little pressure here because Florida State rushed five men. The line, however, is equal to the task. Pass is thrown, and Collins just absolutely outran everybody. Gave him a little shoulder juke inside. Waited slightly for the football, but it's an easy touchdown and an 80-yard drive by Pittsburgh. That is exactly how the game began, with Pittsburgh getting on the scoreboard early. They're going to go for two, a 39-yard pass for a touchdown to Collins. This time a 36 here in the second half. Martino back, goes in the end zone, and it is good. In the end zone is Benji Pryor, and it is 23. 2-15. And now a game that was 23-7, to and Bud, you said that really Pittsburgh had not been hurt and hurt themselves. You can see now that they're very much back in the ball game. Well, they certainly closed the gap in a hurry with that two point extra point as we take another look at it here. Roll out pass and when you're uh, rolling out and somebody stops short the defense usually does overrun it. The receiver is wide open. I thought he might get out of the end zone but he was able to come up down with both feet in and make the two points good. And there is Sam Platt, the deep man who had some outstanding moments running in the first half. And I know Bobby Bowden just shaking his head because the last thing he said to his team in between halves was don't give them anything cheap. And they gave an 80-yard touchdown drive and a long pass for the touchdown. It only took Pittsburgh a minute and 51 seconds. And now Dave Trout out of Scottsdale, Pennsylvania is ready. And he kicks it high, but not that deep. And Platt takes it at the four. Platt is out near the 20-yard line where, for the first time, Rick Stockstill and company come on in the second half. Now, Stockstill in the first half had a couple of touchdown passes. One to Hardis Johnson and the other to Sam Childers. Capiz kicked three field goals. And now Dan Reno has two touchdown passes, both to Dwight Collins. Platt and Whiting at the tailback and fullback. And that is Platt trying to get outside and does for maybe a yard, and that's about all before the secondary came up 
led by Pappy Thomas, number nine, and down at the bottom you can get up and see 29, Dan Short, a sophomore out of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. And they continue to run away from Hugh Green. That's no bad strategy, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Green usually goes to the split end side where he's got the opportunity to stack as a linebacker, drop off to be in pass defense or to be an extra man rushing. Bill Williams wide to the left. Artis Thompson to the right. Stockstill still with the football, rolling out, going to run with the football and gets across the 20 yard line. It'll be third down and long from the 23. And there may be a flag or is that an airplane sailing overhead? There it goes. Not as big a hand as Stockstill picking up four yards. Third down and about five to go. Gives you some idea how good the wind conditions are, though. Absolutely no wind. Big play, or we'll see Ron Stock in the kick again. Stockstill with the ball, fires the ball high, and it is caught at the 42 yard line. Getting up is Kurt Unglob. Another one of those slow but sure handed wide receivers of Florida State. Rick Trocano made the stop. First down. This is excellent execution. A little bit of a running fake to try to freeze the defense momentarily. A little pressure, but the ball is perfectly on target. And it was very well defended. Unglob made a fine catch of a very good throw. Stocksdale gets pressured here, as you can see, but like any good quarterback, after the fake, looks downfield, finds his man. Concentrating on the throw and not worrying about the rush. And now Stockstill is hit in the backfield. And guess by whom? Hugh Green. A loss from the 41 and a half yard line back inside the 35 yard line. And now they pick it up and march it out to the 37. They'll give him a four yard loss, and you'll see Hugh Green right on Rick Stockstill. A little bit of a rollout. He think missed the signal there. Ran into Green, who just smothers him all over him. The reason they moved the ball forward was because where the contact is made, that's a forward progress stop. Second down and 14 to go. 23 15, Florida State, third quarter. Fox go down again. And the big rush is effective. In the second quarter, Florida State burned Pittsburgh badly by running the football when the big rush was on and there was no pursuit when they popped it. But here, you can see Hugh Green again. He's coming in along with the other end, Jackson. And there he is. Bing, bing from both sides. Jackson hit him first, as you will see. Here's Jackson, and here comes Mr. Green. That's called duck for your life. <laughs> third down and 24 to go. 10 minutes to go to third quarter. Pittsburgh putting on tremendous pressure. They dump it out the front. Out across the 35, across the 40, across the 50. Putt's got the first down. Beautiful execution of the screen pass. Ricky Jackson made the stop. Now that is a play that Jackie Sherrill anticipated today, the screen, because they do on the sprint. The sprint out and the draw so often. And that time they got Hugh Green and company charging, flipped the ball out, and Platt made another outstanding run. He got a start, but uh, he really did most of it on his own. When you come off uh, long yardage like that, boy, it gives the offense a boost. First down at the 46 of Pittsburgh. And Stockstill falls down. Platt's lost the football and falls on the back of the 46 yard line. Stockstill tripped and fell. Boy, I don't know how you can whistle that dead when the ball is still bouncing around, but they did. Look at Dan Short there standing over Platt. Now let's watch you, Green. Stockstill was hit as he tried to toss the ball. You see Green just looking for it now, just shedding his man, going for the ball. The ball is bouncing around, and they said that Florida State had possession of the ball prior to the second fumble. You know that Ken Lanier weighs 270 pounds, and Hugh Green handled him like he weighed 170 pounds. And we got an unsportsmanlike conduct personal foul against Pittsburgh, which again erases a second down and long situation. 
That is Greg Futch checking. Personal foul you saw. And so it is second down and short, second down and four. The break goes to Florida State. A lot different in second and 20. First man through, and that is the fullback, and that is Mike Whiting. And he's inside the 35 yard line. And we're getting close to field goal range. And they're moving the sticks again. Another first down, Florida State. Artis Johnson comes in. Florida State has a feeling that nobody figures they are for real. They also have a feeling, even after 11 and 0 last year, that no one thought they were for real. But if they can take Nebraska one week and Pittsburgh the second, maybe they'll get some notoriety. Here is Platt. Cut back. Gets down to the 30 yard line. 57. Third down and four to go. Florida State has moved with the help of. An unnecessary roughness penalty. Second and 20 as it was. They wound up with second down and five. McKinnon, they haven't thrown to him tonight. Goes wide to the left. <laughs> 26 to 15. And Capice has now kicked 13 out of 14 field goal attempts this year. The only miss he's had was 51 yards. Renegade. And aren't the Seminoles acting like Renegades tonight? And the fans are suddenly behind them. Pittsburgh still has a big job ahead. Down by 11, 6.27 to go, third quarter. And the big play on that drive was the third down. I think they had about 26 or 28 to go when they hit the screen pass to Platt. Looked as though it'd be forced into kicking. Bill Capice. Florida. Artrell Hawkins goes deep for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh struck quickly. The problem was they allowed Florida State to come back downfield and pick up three. Florida State kept the ball for six minutes and 38 seconds on that drive. And this is automatic. I'm afraid that they start in the 20 again after he kicks it into the end zone. We'll see. Too deep, about three yards deep in the end zone, and Hawkins will bring it out. Hawkins turns the corner. Hawkins still on his feet, and now goes down and did not get to the 20-yard line. Dragged down by Gary Henry, number 40, and Bill Capice, the kicker, number 17. And now Dan Marino and company will try to move as smartly and as quickly as they did last time when they scored within the first two minutes of the second half. And once again, it's getting monotonous, Jim, that they. Started the first time they got the ball on the 44, and we look at the scoring drive here 13 plays, 63 yards. The big one being the screen pass. It took six minutes and 42 seconds for the field goal. But Pittsburgh has started at their 20 or behind the 20 on every possession. This is their ninth possession, except for the first time they had the ball. Pittsburgh is undefeated. Florida State lost by a point to Miami when they elected to go for two. That is their only loss. First down, Marino passing. Still all the time in the world, and the ball is batted away by Keith Jones, intended for Woody Cotter. Second down. And this crowd uh, loves it in their real support. We have not gotten any attendance figures, but the word was they expected the largest crowd ever. They just enlarged the stadium a little bit after last season. Here comes to the left. White Collins has caught two touchdown passes. Number 32 goes. You can just see his feet at the top of the screen. Second down, 10. Marino still with amazing production. Flag is down. And McMillan is still on his feet. But remember, a flag is down at the 16-yard line. McMillan gets out to the 29, which should be good enough for the first down. I think that Dombrowski did not get set quite quickly enough. He changed from the bottom of your screen to the top of the screen and was not still for the required second. 
He was just to the right of your screen. You can't quite see him, but he wasn't quite still. And we get the procedure penalty. Very good play here by McMillan as he sheds the first tackler, turns it upfield. He made the first down, but uh, it all goes back. Well, he got rid of Rob Herring, who's a pretty fine linebacker. He shed Henry. Monty Futz knocked him out of bounds. Marino's stats are pretty good, but Pittsburgh is down by 11 points. Look at the time he's got. Oh, it was intercepted by Herring. And 10 for McMillan. And Rob Herring, oh, does he want that back? That would have been touchdown for sure and might have sealed the result of this game. Linebackers always have a little bit of tape in their hands, and that makes it a little tougher to catch the ball. I don't think Herring expected the ball out there. You can see the tape on his hands. When you're wearing that much, it does help you shed blocks, but it doesn't help you catch the ball. Third down, 15 from the 13 yard line. Dombrowski and Cotter both come to the left. Collins goes to the right. One setback. Marino forced him to throwing again. Still with no pressure. Goes it for Carter. And I believe Carter made the catch at the 41-yard line. First down. I can't believe he made the catch, Jim. He was covered by three men, but the ball was perfectly on target. Now they're saying, no, the ball is incomplete. And Carter is incapacitated for the moment. The officials came out. And let's watch it again, Bob. The officials came out with a leg call of incomplete. Always bothers me when it's that delayed. <laughs> but let's take a look at it. Perfect throw. Couldn't see the ball from that angle, but uh, we'll take a look at it from this angle and see if we can see what happened. Marino makes a perfect throw here. Collier running a crossing pattern. Three men closing on him. The ball appears to be on target. He appears to have it for a moment. He goes down, and one official ruled complete. Another official came in late, said nope. He trapped the ball, and the late call is the call that prevails. Henry is the man deep at the 48-yard line, barring a fumble. Florida State should have excellent field position again. Line drive, chance for Henry to bring it back. Trying to get wide for the wall on this side to the 40. Cuts inside and knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. First and 10, Florida State. Gary Henry, the junior out of Orlando. And Rick Stockstill again has outstanding field position. And that is something you could not say for most of the first half. As we watch Hepler punt the ball here, the kick is low. It only goes 34 yards. Florida State does a good job of setting up the blocking wall along the line of scrimmage. Catch is made, and you can see from the right-hand side of the screen that there are no white jerseys coming there. Catch is made. No pressure. A lot of time to get started. Well, I tell you, things don't usually happen that slowly, and we didn't mean for it to happen that slowly, but you can see what happened to Gary Henry as he caught the ball on a line drive, as Bud described, and he got down to the 33-yard line where time has been called. 5.43 to go. Third quarter, 26-15, Florida State. And once again, the kicking game of Pittsburgh has cost them tremendous yardage. That was a net gain of 20 yards on the punt after the 16-yard return. Well, the Pittsburgh Panthers talking to, well, both coaches as Bud and I did. He got the feeling that Bobby Bowden was hopeful that his young men could do it. Fighting a few green, where Jackie Sherrill figured that he wishes he had his defensive secondary back, but thought that he could handle the team because of his fine defense. Doxtell is actually tackled as Whiting has the football and gets inside the 20 or the 30 yard line down to the 27. And once again, Florida State barring some accidents within field goal range without having to make a first down. Otis Johnson comes in, and that's the score, and we do not have it wrong. That is the correct score. Undefeated Pittsburgh in the top five in the country. Down by 11 points. Williams in motion left. Pitch back, and this is Platt again. This time dragged down from behind. Platt does not get a good jump, and that is Greg Meisner, number 86, that made the stop. One of that fine front five that they have at Pittsburgh. But any time that you have a man like Sam Platt gaining more than 100 yards, 
when they have been doing such things the Steelers have as holding Maryland to 22 yards on 43 carries. You know that your defense has been tested even though your offense has given up the ball on some fumbles. Knox Hill and Whiting could not turn around quick enough. Knox Hill had to have that play develop in such a hurry because he was being harassed. They had the screen call. The blitz was on. Normally he should have time to get rid of it, but it came so fast that he didn't even have time to get set. You can see the Pittsburgh rush. They're only coming with four men, but Jackson does a great job of getting past his man. Stockstill sees him coming, throws the ball, overthrows, no chance. Well, but I thought I said they were going to have Mississippi State at Miami, and Miami's the only team to beat Florida State. Maybe I said Florida State down there. I got the Seminoles on my mind for the moment, but our game, of course, is Mississippi State. At Miami and Capice does it again from more than 40 yards out. Bill Capice has now kicked five field goals. He had four against Nebraska. And it is 29 to 15, and again, a two touchdown margin. Marvelous field position execution by Florida State. Their putting game together with their field goals is remarkable. You realize one thing we have not seen Ron Stark have to punt the ball in this half. Not for a long while as he come out there with one of his boomers. They drove from their own 18 yard line to Capisa's first field goal of the half and then they Got the ball on the Pittsburgh 33 did not make the first down but the punt return the net punt of 20 yards set him up within field goal range. Four minutes 24 seconds to go in the third quarter. Pittsburgh shell shot. By the kicking game by the fact they dropped the ball and by kicking such as that that has our drill Hawkins not bringing it out. It'll be first and 10 from the 20 yard line as Capice does his job again. It's a repetitious thing, but I'd like to tell you where Pittsburgh has had the ball on the exchange. The first time they had it on Florida State's 44 yard line, then their own 12, their own 18, their own 20, their own 11, their own 6, their own 20, their own 20, their own 20, the 18, and the 20. So they've been a long way from the goal line. That is what is called as having lousy field position. Starting on their own 20 here, Marino now forced to get the ball away and does, and the ball is caught across the 30 yard line. And I believe. That was Benji Pryor, the tight end, who takes it to the 34-yard line, where the tackle is made by James Harris, number 33 of Florida State. The uh, Panthers, when they strike, can be lightning quick. Their long, long touchdown passes have been a 39 and 36 yards to Dwight Collins. They've gone for the two extra points, and that's the only points they've got. And this is their fullback, McMillan, carrying the ball near the 40-yard line, a pick of a four on the play. Now it'll be second down and five to go. And Hester's they, down the bottom there. He's getting up along with Motzik, number 67. Pittsburgh stays with their pattern of draw, screen, throw downfield. Three and a half minutes to go. In comes Wayne DiBartolo. Well, McMillan at fullback, he carries the number 31. The first time we've seen him, he is the up man. Second down and five from the 40, and there it is. Dumped inside to number 88, Jeff Casper. Goes down to the 40-yard line, and that is another first down for Pittsburgh. They moved from the 20, and now they're on the 40, make it the 41 of Florida State. Had that one right on target. Just a little seam pass breaking between the corner man and the inside safety. McMillan comes back in. And now Casper, who ran off the feet well on the front. Yes, Casper, I think he got a New Jersey. He's back in, and Dwight Collins goes out wide to the right. And there is the second man through. That is McCall. McCall has a first down across the 30 yard line, down to the 26 yard line, where a bonus short. Made the stop along with Ron Simmons. He's trying to tell him protect for the draw, but be sure you rush the passer. 
That's tough to do. Joe McCall had just carried that football is out of Miami, Florida, playing for Pittsburgh. He's wide to the right now as Julius Dawkins has come in and has split to the left. And Moreno says, I can't hear. He turns around to the referee, Paul Smith. Pretty unfair of the crowd to boo when the referee makes a proper decision. If the offensive team can't hear the start count, snap count, he should take time out, try to get the crowd a little quiet. Mike Dombrowski has come back in, and McCall goes out. Now that is, you heard me right, that is a tight end for a halfback. But they're splitting him out wide and using him as receivers. 222 left third quarter, 29 15, Florida State. Dawkins is to the left, and Dombrowski to the right, and Reno's back to throw. Has a lot of time, and underthrows his man, and that is Julius Dawkins at the 10 yard line. Dawkins was going to be open if he'd gotten the ball to him. Second down and 10. Fry goes up for defense. This is the only night ball game played by Pittsburgh this year, and it's only the second time they've been away this year, and it's the first time they're on official turf this year. I should say on real turf instead of artificial turf. Marino rolling out, has his man under the coverage at the 19 yard line, and that is number 84, Benji Pryor, who has made another catch on this drive to bring them down to a first down inside the 15. They'll mark it at the 14. First down, Pittsburgh. They're down by 14 points. Score here, and they're just a touchdown apart with more than a quarter to go. The offensive line continues to do just a marvelous job of protecting Marino. Collins to the right, Dawkins to the left, and Pittsburgh driving. Drive started on their own 20 yard line. Dawkins hands to McMillan, who picks up two yards only. That's about all you can see Herring in there, Hester in there. Out of the second down. They'll mark it at the 12 yard line. Jackie Sherrill and his Pittsburgh Panthers. They're close to getting back into the ball game should they score here. They need to put it in the end zone. Uh, three points is not enough. Not when you got a Capisa that can get the three points back almost at will. Dawkins left and Collins right. Moreno. Lots of time. Fires the football and Dawkins can't hold on to it at the four yard line. Flag is down and it may be first and goal to go. I believe that's what the call will be. Sometimes though you get a little shaken because it could be offensive interference as well as defensive. Both teams have equal right to the ball when it's in the air. Look at that line pass protection. Couldn't quite see it. Someone must have put a hand on him because it is called as defensive interference. That's going to be first and goal to go. Let's see if it's Henry, number 40, or someone else, if we can tell. Well, I can't tell. I couldn't see it either, Jim. There's Henry on the ground. We will not give Gary the, the fault on the play because we're not sure. All right, first and goal to go. A call is back in. And they've got a full house backfield. Call is in motion. Second man through and going nowhere is McMillan. As Florida State shows, it's got a defensive line also. There is Gary Futch down at the bottom. Bonasart, a strong safety, came up. I couldn't tell whether they got a little mixed up in the backfield or whether they wanted the tailback to go in motion. It clicked almost as though Marino told him as an afterthought, hey, you're not supposed to be in here. Move out as a flanker. 52,894 looking on here. They're looking on live on television in this area. And you're watching it on ESPN. 25 seconds to go, third quarter. McCall and touchdown. An 80 yard drive helped by the interference call. And McCall taking it in from the two. And now, it is quite a ball game, isn't it? 
He's going to try to kick this one. Then they're only seven points behind. Uh, should they score again, he could go for two if they want to try to win the ball game. That was an 80-yard drive in four minutes and seven seconds. Trout is in, and obviously, Bud, they're going to go for, barring a trick play, a single point to make it 29-22 and start the fourth quarter. There are 16 seconds left in the third with just a touchdown difference. It was 23 to 7 at the half, and now it is 29 22, Florida State. And that, as you can tell, is a bad graphic. It is not 29 to 18, but 29 to 22. And now Florida State and Stockstill. Not only have to hang on to the football, they've got to get some points. There's the score because there's more than 15 minutes to go. And Pittsburgh has shown that they're not panicky, that they can move the football and quickly. They've got to do is not let Florida State cross midfield. The minute they do, could pieces right there, and you're looking at three points. Dennis McKinnon is a deep man as you take a look at the score, and 16 seconds left right in the center of your picture there. In the third quarter, as Trout will kick off, that is McKinnon in the end zone. Harris nearest to you. This youngster, also from Miami, can fly. About to kick off, the Panthers acting like a team that does not want to give up its chances for a national championship easily. McKinnon way in the end zone. And now Florida State will take the ball out to the 20 yard line. First and 10 from there. Now, but at one time, as we said, it was 23 to 7. That was at the end of the half, and you made the point that Pittsburgh had hurt itself an awful lot with those three fumbles, plus the great kicking game of Florida State. But now here are the Panthers, and I see Joe Green and company holding hands out there on defense, saying, fellas, let's stop them, get the ball back, and we are in this game to stay. They got to play this series of downs just like the Florida State has the ball on their Pittsburgh 10 yard line. There's Stockstill rolling out, getting the ball away, and Williams can't get to it. At the 46 yard line, Phil Williams could not get to it. Pappy Thomas was covering him, but he was well off. Williams had the ball been accurately thrown, it would have been a first down across the 45. A very long throw when you're throwing it on the run, and when you have Hugh Green breathing down your throat. Artis Johnson comes in with the play, number 22. It is second down 10. Stop at nine seconds to go. Stock still. He's got time. He fires the football. He's got his ball across the 30. Push down. That is Williams. Tackled by Pappy Thomas. First down, Florida State. They needed it. That is the end of the third quarter. The clock is run down. And at the end of three, you could not want a better football game between better teams than what you're watching Florida State and Pittsburgh. At the moment, there's a seven-point difference. It is 29-22, Florida State. This is the 32-yard line. 29 22 that is whiting the fullback back to the line of scrimmage the scoreboard Bud said last week number three Nebraska this week number three Pittsburgh no one said it would be easy and this one will not be easy tonight interesting third quarter neither team punted Florida State drove from their own 18 yard line to Capisa's first field goal and they had a punt return and started on the pit 33 for the second field goal. Pittsburgh put together two great 80 yard touchdown drives. Artis Johnson wide right Bill Williams to the left. Second down and nearly 10 to go and that is Platt cutting back. Platt picks up about seven yards up to the 37 yard line where Ricky Jackson number 87 peeled back to make the stop. Third down and short. This is the late delayed draw to the tailback. They've been faking this, faking it, faking it, and then throwing. This time they gave it to Platt. He found a little daylight, picked up pretty good yardage, and sets up what is a key down for Pittsburgh. All right, Unglob is wide to the right. About three and a half yards to go. McKinnon in motion. Here they go over the middle. Steve Fidel. A little 
crossing pattern. Reasonably good pass protection here. Stock still back. Throws it over the middle. Both men driving hard for the ball. Looked as though for a moment it might be almost an interception. He's unable to get in front of the football to make it. Hard collision. Good call. Artis Johnson only outweighed by 50 pounds for the man with whom he collided. Now here's Ron Stark in. Over comes Flynn. He's back at the nine yard line and in a lot of trouble. Harris is a fullback. Larry Harris, a freshman out of Gainesville, made the stop at the 16 yard line. It's a remarkable thing the way he kicks that football. 47 yard net punt. And you know he has been averaging before tonight about 46 8 which is nearly 47. Well, the point being that uh, that's about average for him 47 yards. Well he kicked at 53 but we had the six yard return and net yardage is what you're looking for and we're getting a penalty call again against the Panthers and that'll be half the distance to the goal line as the ball now is on the 17 yard line and the Panthers of Pittsburgh with nearly the whole quarter to go and down by only seven points if they are to move this football must do it from within.